Hello everyone and welcome to our channel Physiosaurus. In today's video, I am going to talk about your body posture. Okay, so by definition, posture is defined as the relative arrangement of the parts of the body. Okay, so posture is basically nothing but the relative arrangement of the parts of the body. Now, a good posture is the state of muscular and skeletal balance which protects the supporting structures of the body against injury okay so a good posture what does a good posture do it basically protects your body against injury okay now when we talk about the posture we must learn how posture in the human body is developed okay so here the first point is at birth the spine is flexed okay flexed spine means it is concave in the forward okay and primary curve is found at the birth okay now after three months or at three months of age cervical spine develops lordosis okay why it develops lordosis because your the child starts lifting their head okay but your lumbar spine it develops the secondary curve okay why because the child then begins to sit up and walk okay now until 18 months your knee remains in the genu varum position v u v a r u m varum position and until 3 years knees are knock knees okay and it becomes straight at the age of 6 years okay now let's talk about the types of posture so there are basically two types of posture one is a static and the other one is dynamic examples of the static posture are lying kneeling sitting okay and the examples of the dynamic postures are walking running jumping lifting etc etc okay now let's talk about postural control or how the posture is controlled by our body so it is controlled by the four types of the system so the first one is central nervous system second is visual system third is vestibular system and the fourth is musculoskeletal system okay now let's talk about the role of the muscle in the posture so there are a uh, role of the muscle such as your trunk muscle and the cervical muscle they both are involved in maintaining the posture of the body trunk muscle includes abdominalis erector spiny sos major quadratus lumborum okay and the cervical muscles include trapezius scalenus levator scapulae okay now let's talk about what will happen when the body will move okay so let's say the body will move the body is moving in the forward direction okay so now when the body moves forward the center of the gravity of the body shifts towards the anterior side and then the extensor muscles work now what are the extensor muscles extensor muscles are the erector spiny posterior neck muscles posterior neck muscles include trapezius okay so these are the muscles they contract and provide stability to the spine now let's say the body is moving in the backward direction okay so when the body will move in the backward direction then the center of gravity will shift towards the posterior side okay and then the flexor muscles such as rectus abdominalis intercostals as well as sos major anterior scalenus capitis sternocleidomastoid all these muscles they contract and provide stability to the spine okay now let's uh, see the third case okay in the third case the body is moving towards the lateral side towards the one side okay so when the body is moving towards the one side then the center of gravity shifts laterally and the muscles of the contralateral size side okay such as sos major quadratus lumborum erector spiny internal and the external oblique muscles sternocleidomastoid scalenus intercostal muscle they are contracts and they provide stability to the spine okay now when we talk about the posture there must be a standard posture okay in the back view or in the side view okay so basically uh, i'll talk about the assessment of the posture later on so first of all we are dealing with the standard posture what is the standard posture of the body okay so in the back view an imaginary line represents a plane that coincides with the mid line of the body okay so there is an imaginary line that coincides with the mid line of the body and it begins from the point between your heel 
okay from the back view between your heel and extend upward between the lower extremity through the midpoint of the pelvis where the two pelvis bone meets okay and it then passes to throughout the spine skull and divides the body into equal and right and left half okay now uh, let's talk about the standard posture in the side view okay so in the side view a vertical line of reference begins at the calcaneo cuboidal joint okay it begins at the calcaneo cuboidal joint and it extend to the point slightly anterior to the center of the knee joint okay so from the uh, from the calcaneo cuboidal joint the vertical line of reference it extend towards knee slightly anterior to the center of knee joint okay and then it goes to the slightly posterior to the center of hip joint through sacral promontory okay through sacral promontory then it goes towards the body of the lumbar vertebra dense external auditory meters slight and then it goes to the slight posterior to the apex of coronal suture okay so after passing through external auditory meters it goes slightly posterior to the apex of the coronal suture and it divides the body into anterior and posterior parts okay now let's talk about factors that promote the abnormal posture so there are basically four factors pain weak muscles anatomical impairments and the development factors okay now we'll see some examples of the abnormal posture some cases of the abnormal posture so the first one is excessive lordosis okay so in excessive lordosis in lumbar region the angle can go up to 40 degrees okay and the anterior convexity of the lumbar region increases okay if lordosis happens in the cervical region then the anterior convexity in the cervical region will also increase okay and that leads to sagging of shoulder medial rotation of the arm and poking forward of head so that it is in front of the center of gravity okay now let's talk about the etiology for the excessive lumbar lordosis so first one is weakness of muscle second is tightness or contracture of hip flexor muscles third one is congenital okay fourth one is pregnancy fifth one is high heel shoes sixth one is spondylolisthesis seventh is postural deformity eighth one is anterior tilt of pelvis due to weak extensor of hip and abdominalis and the ninth one is tightness or shortening of cervical extensor okay now the second case is kyphotic lordotic curvature okay now in the kyphotic lordotic curvature your lumbar spine and cervical spine they gets hyperextended okay while the thoracic spine gets flexed and the head becomes slightly forward okay also the pelvis tilts anteriorly and your hip joint gets flexed okay now uh, the slight hyperextension of knees and plantar flexion of ankle joint these both cases can also be seen okay now let's talk about the causes of the lordotic kyphotic lordotic posture okay so the first one is shortening or tightness of extensor of cervical spine lumbar spine and the flexors of the hip joint okay i'll repeat it again what did i say i said shortness or tightness of extensor of cervical spine lumbar spine and the flexors of the hip joint the second one is weakness of neck flexors upper back extensors such as erector spinae and the weakness of hamstring muscles okay and the third one is bone anomaly okay now the third abnormal posture is sway back posture what happens in the sway back posture so in the sway back posture head becomes slightly forward okay and there is cervical there is cervical extension okay along with cervical extension there is flexion of thoracic spine and the lordosis of the lumbar spine okay now along with that there is extension of hip okay extension of hip and knee joint during standing position and along with that pelvis rotates in the posterior direction 
so now we are talking about the causes of the sway back posture so the first cause is tightness of hamstring and abdominal muscle okay second cause is the weakness of, of the certain muscles and the third one is bony anomaly okay weakness of muscles such as iliopsis muscle okay now the next posture is flat back posture okay what happens in the flat back posture so your whole lumbar and the thoracic spine gets flattened okay so and here the causes and the symptoms of the both flat back and sway back are the common okay now excessive flexion and backward deviation of the upper thoracic spine is seen in the sway back posture okay and the spine and the spine becomes almost straight in flat back posture so there is two points that should be noted so the first one is excessive flexion and the backward deviation of the upper thoracic spine is seen in sway back posture and the second one is spine becomes almost straight in flat back posture okay now let's talk about forward head posture okay in the forward head posture there is excessive extension of cervical spine and the flexion of the lower cervical and the upper thoracic spine so what happens in the forward head posture excessive extension of cervical spine that is the first one okay along with that flexion of the lower cervical spine and flexion of the upper thoracic spine okay now let's talk about the etiology okay so the etiology is Uh, working on computer which is slightly higher than the position of the head use of high pillow under the neck watching television for longer period of time okay so these are the common causes for the which one forward head posture okay now the next one is flat neck posture in the flat neck posture there is increased flexion of the occiput on atlas and decreased lordosis of the cervical spine okay so what happens in the flat neck posture there is increased flexion of the occiput on atlas and there is decreased lordosis of the cervical spine let's talk about their causes so the first cause is activity which requires straightening of the cervical spine second one is attention position for prolonged period of time for higher period of time third one is using high pillow under the head and the fourth one is spasm in the cervical muscle okay now the next one is scoliosis okay so what is scoliosis so scoliosis is nothing but the bending of the vertebral column towards one side okay combined with rotation rotation of the vertebral body towards the convexity and the spinous process towards the concavity okay so scoliosis can be measured on x ray by using cob and rib vertebral angle method so this was all about the abnormal posture in the next video i am going to talk about how do you assess a posture okay so in assessment of posture there are uh, three methods first one is anterior view okay the second one is posterior view okay and the third one is lateral view or the sideline view so i'll talk about this anterior posterior and the lateral view in detail in the upcoming video so thank you so much for watching this video